Hi, I'm David Poe from Clinical Edge, and welcome to this five minute physio tip on how you can differentiate acute rye neck from a discogenic rye neck. It has a lot of implications as far as the recovery time goes and how you're gonna go about treating it. So in today's video, we're gonna mostly focus on the acute rye necks, and then in the next video, we're gonna follow up with the discogenic rye neck. And with these two videos, it'll give you lots of good ideas on how you can go about assessing and treating these and getting great results. So what is rye neck? If we look at the features of rye neck, we've got neck pain and restriction of movement, so both of those, and it's important that they've got unilateral or asymmetrical symptoms. So we've got a few different types of rye neck. We've got the acute rye neck, a disky rye neck, atlantoaxial subluxation, spasmodic torticollis, or hysterical rye neck. You won't see too many of the old hysterical rye necks, but Let's check out, in this we're not going to cover atlantoaxial subluxation and we're not going to cover torticollis or hysterical rye neck. What we are going to focus on though is acute rye neck. So the features of this are it occurs in pre-teens to a young adult. So that time frame is really important, the age of your patient, to be able to diagnose an acute rye neck. It happens more commonly in females than males. It's got a sudden onset and often following a trivial incident or post viral and this is important that they're often pain free at rest so what causes it well we don't really know but what we do know is that there's some possibilities and they think it could be an entrapped fat pad or possibly an entrapped or extrapped menisci or an acute nipping of the synovial fringe of the capsule the features of your acute right neck are that there's a comfortable position that you can find they can't actually rotor, rotate or laterally flex to their contralateral side. So if they've got pain on the right, they're having trouble rotating or laterally flexing to their left. They're unable to reach the midline with their rotation or their lateral flexion, and they get sharp, sudden pain with active movements. So the, if you're looking at the recovery of an acute right neck, we know that it's self-limiting. So they are gonna get better, but they do often recur. The good news is that they generally respond quickly to treatment, and they've got a shorter recovery time than some of the other types of rye neck, particularly a discogenic rye neck. The ways that you can treat it, because normally they come in, they're pretty uncomfortable. They're looking to, you know, for you to help to get them moving again. So you can use rotation and lateral flexion movements or pivums in the pain-free direction. So if you push them into pain, oftentimes you're not going to get much of a response. Looking at your pavums or manipulation, this is not your first line treatment. Go more towards your pain-free movements or your pivums in that pain-free direction. After you've treated them though, you should, they should have pretty much a full range of movement post-treatment or at the very least, no sharp pain. So that's the good news with their response to treatment. So the important thing is you want to differentiate it from atlantoaxial subluxation and we are going to cover this in another video. And discogenic rye neck, that's the other important type of rye neck that's coming up in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on acute rye necks and you're looking forward to treating your next one of these.